Hi everyone, this is Howard from the Hollow Science and Nature Center, and welcome to another Star Talk Tuesday. Today, we need a dash of Old Bay as we look into the crustacean of the sky, or Cancer, the crab. For observers in Florida, at 9.30 in the evening, look approximately 80 degrees above the southern horizon, near the top of the sky, or the zenith, and you will find what may appear to be an uninteresting place in the sky. One of the 88 officially recognized constellations, Cancer is also one of the 12 constellations of the zodiac found along the ecliptic plane, or the orbital plane of the Earth as it orbits the Sun. As a result, from the Earth's perspective, all the other planets and the Sun appear to move through the 12 constellations over time. Since ancient times, Cancer has always been represented as a creature with an exoskeleton sometimes a waterborne creature, like a crab or lobster, and in the more distant past as a beetle or similar insect. In this era, the summer solstice on June 21st finds the Sun reaching its highest point of the sky in the constellation of Taurus, the Bull. 4,000 years ago on that same day, the Sun reached its highest point in the sky in the constellation of Cancer making the crab a more significant place in the sky in the ancient world. 4,000 years ago in ancient Egypt, Cancer was identified as the scarab, or the dung beetle that rolled balls of dung across the desert. The scarab represented Kepri, who, like the dung beetle, instead rolled the newborn sun across the sky. His name was associated with creation, or to come into being. Dung beetles are born from balls of dung, their eggs having been laid there by their mothers, of course, and to the Egyptians, but this was tantamount to being born from nothing. As it appeared to the Egyptians, the sun was born each day from nothing, and it was Kepri who rolled the newborn sun across the sky each day like a ball of dung, also a source of creation. The name Cancer was first recorded in the second century AD by Claudius Ptolemy under the Greek name Carcinos or Crab. From an observer's perspective, it might be thought that Cancer has nothing to offer, like a ball of dung. It is the second dimmest of the twelve zodiacal constellations and has only two stars above fourth magnitude in terms of brightness. But upon closer examination, Cancer reveals a real beauty. Nestled in the heart of the crab is a famous target of stargazers known as M44, or Praesepi, the manger, a beautiful open cluster of stars. Now before the age of telescopes, human eyes could only discern the nebulous glow of the cluster without resolving any of the stars. Ptolemy described it as the nebulous mass in the breast of Cancer. The Greek poet Aretas called it Oculus or the little mist. The Greeks and Romans described the nebulous glow of this cluster as a manger full of hay, and the two visible neighboring bright stars were two donkeys feeding from the manger. The names of those two stars today reflect the Greco-Roman view, Acellus Borealis and Acellus Australis, or the donkey of the north and the donkey of the south. The ancient Babylonian name for Acellus Australis was Arku Shanangaru Shashutu, which obviously means the Southeast Star in the Crab. Now, fast forward to a cold evening in 1609 when Galileo pointed one of the first telescopes into the sky at the nebulous mass in the breast of Cancer and was the first human to see the object for what it really was, a cluster of stars he recorded nearly 40 individual stars in the view and wrote of them in his stellar treatise, Sidereus Nuncius, or the Starry Messenger. Today, the manger is known as the Beehive Cluster, clearly a name earned for its stellar appearance after people could see the nebulous smudge in a telescope, which resolved the view into a swarm of nearly 1,000 stars. Located approximately 600 light years away, and estimated to be 600 million years old, these stellar babies will eventually scatter across the galactic arm like so many other stars before them. 
the low power views offered by binoculars bring out the best in the beehive. Both north and south donkeys and the manger fit nicely within the view. An additional challenge presents itself in Cancer for those with darker skies and more aperture. Not far away, in the view anyway, is the smaller but more distant cluster known as M67, made up of only 200 stars, but an additional 2,000 light years beyond the beehive. This dense little cluster will likely show up as a faint smudge in binoculars. Ironically, how the beehive used to look to the ancients without the aid of optics. For more on the night sky and the Milky Way and beyond, join us again next week for another Star Talk Tuesday. We'll see you then, folks.